This video is to explain to you how to use your water storage in case you have a power outage where if you're on city water or if you have a well pump that isn't running, how to use your water efficiently. So these are my favorite water containers. They're five gallons. And the ones that I get are the camping ones that have the little nozzle here that's a spigot that you just turn. This is the one that I had up in my kitchen, so it's the one I'm going to show you. So this water is meant to last you for however long it is you've decided you need to keep this water storage. It's going to taste funny because it's been in the storage container for however long and when you put it in you had a little bit of chlorine that you put in with it so it's going to taste bad. Um, the way that you work with that is that anything that you're going to drink out of that you're going to boil it first. I just like to make um, herbal teas for my family when we have to drink this water and that's what we drink so that it tastes good and it also boils the chlorine out. Um, you don't want to use very much of this for washing. When it comes to hygiene, this is what you'll do. You'll fill a bowl, or this is even better, a tub in your sink. You'll fill it about one third full of water. Then you'll add uh, maybe a, an eighth of a teaspoon of chlorine to that, and you'll leave that in your sink for hand washing purposes. You're not going to open your spigot every time that somebody needs to wash their hands. You're going to have a tub in here with water and a little bit of chlorine and that's how everybody's going to wash their hands. And um, then you can have a second tub next to it in here with a little water that doesn't have the chlorine in it for rinsing and stuff like that to get the chlorine off your hands. But you're going to use that water all day in the kitchen. You're going to have another tub like this set up in your bathroom for washing in there. And at every place that you have water that you're using, you're going to have a small package of wet wipes. And everybody's going to wa wipe their hands with wet wipes before they use this water. That way any visible dirt, um, any solids, most of the solids will come off with the wet wipes. So wet wipes are important. When you are doing um, something that needs to be warm water, what you'll do is you'll fill your container. You'll First off, anything that was in this bowl goes into a bucket. You save your water in your bucket, and this is the water that you use to flush your toilet. You do not ever, ever, ever use your water storage for flushing a toilet. You use wastewater for flushing your toilet. So you'll save all your water in here. Everyone will go to the bathroom in the toilet, and anytime you need to flush the toilet, you'll go and pour this in, and it will flush your toilet for you. Never use potable water for flushing your toilet. And if everybody goes pee all day, you don't flush that toilet until somebody has a bowel movement. All the toilet paper goes into a garbage can next to the toilet. You do not put anything, no toilet paper goes in that toilet because you're using as little water as possible and it takes more water to, to flush solids. So if somebody has a bowel movement, that's when you use this water to flush that toilet. Until then, you're using urine <laughs> and your toilet is filling up with urine, which isn't gonna hurt anything. So if for some reason you need to have hot water, if it's a short-term emergency, nobody is taking a bath. Nobody is taking a bath. Nobody is taking a bath. You are using wet wipes to clean genitals and armpits and faces, wet wipes alone. Not a good time to be wearing makeup because you don't wanna get an eye infection from not being able to take a shower and get that makeup off all the way. So. You're filling, you, you've poured this water that was used for hand washing into your bucket, and now you have a clean bowl again. You're going to pour the same amount of water into your bowl, and then you're going to take your boiling water and pour a little bit of boiling water in. And that is how you warm it. You don't have a big pot of water over on your wood burning stove or your little tiny camp stove that you're cooking on. You want to, it, it, it wastes energy. Trying to get that much water to come to a boil is very wasteful. So, small amount of water, bring it to a boil, pour your water into the cold water till it's the temperature that you want. And if you don't have a wood-burning stove, don't be heating water. Um, unless you're worried about the, um, the quality of the water you're drinking, if you're worried it's, it's got something nasty in it, then you would need to boil your water if you don't have a water filter. Um, but again, small amounts. And the other thing is, if you have a wood stove, 
you don't want that big tub of boiling water to be on your stove because it's going to cause condensation. You're going to have a very steamy house, which is going to cause mold problems. And it and your water is going to start evaporating. You don't want your water evaporating. You want it to stay in. You want it to stay in your container so that you can drink it. So small amounts of water only for for heating purposes. And I think that's it as far as uh, in the winter. Um, you would use this water for flushing toilets in the summer. You not this water. This water you'd use it for flushing toilets if in the summer you had plants were suffering and you had an outhouse instead of a flushing toilet and you were using an outhouse, then this water could go to watering trees that weren't getting watered because you didn't have a sprinkler system. But that's pretty that's pretty basic. Make sure nobody get, uh, goes without water. You need to stay hydrated. And again, I we prefer tea because a lot of times this water does taste kind of nasty. Uh, it's just been sitting in that plastic for a long time. Um, so I cannot stress highly enough, uh, have a little bit of chlorine on hand. This does turn into water eventually. So you don't wanna be using chlorine that has been in your storage or your grandma's storage for 30 years because it just turns into water. Um, you need to make sure to cycle your chlorine and always keep a box. And by a box, I mean like an apple box of small single use wet wipes on hand because they really do help with body odors and stuff. The way that I figured this out was I used to work for the government, for the state, and we went camping a lot, and uh, we didn't have water. The only water we had was for drinking water, and so we used wet wipes to make sure that we weren't stinky uh, while we were camping for, for 10 days or whatever. So wet wipes are, are a lifesaver to make it more livable around other people who are going to be possibly in a, in a cramped environment.